All right, now we've got this dent here on the bell, which is like, actually seems like a bunch of stuff. Bam, 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 bam. It's like it was slamming against part of the inside of the case while it was um, in it. So it's not a super clean dent. But I'm going to just start at the top and go down to the bottom. Got a little ding here right in the logo. And I'm going to locate my dent ball by feel. And start to push. And you can see that one popped out. And move down a little bit. Now we're starting to get to stuff that isn't quite so sharp. It's more just like the sax bell in general is like misshapen. Right on the S there's kind of a ding. So I'm going to use a magnet and that should get me, I mean this dent ball is pretty big so it won't get me right on the center but it should get me pretty close just to make sure I'm not in the wrong spot and I can watch what happens to the dents as I push. Okay, now I'm going to move to this guy right here. That one I can feel a little more. Hopefully the light is such that you guys can actually see these moving. And it's the amount of pressure, like where I put it, that does this. And if I did it too hard, there'd be like a sharp ridge. If I did it too soft, nothing would happen. Um, and it's not like even pressure throughout. I vary it as I move. There's like a line this way. I'm going to try and get out. Still some of it here. I think I'm going to come back with a smaller dent ball, but I'm going to move down to this stuff. starting to get a little harder because these are like pretty deep dense but they're really vague so it's kind of hard to like get it back to where I want without like pressing too hard on on one piece where I don't want to do that and I'm just turning it over to like sight my dent ball see where I'm at Now that the dents aren't so sharp, it's not quite so easy to like feel it against those dents, at least for me. I'm going to try and push this part out right now. This part right here is kind of hard to get to because my the shape of the dent ball means like when I move towards that, I'm not really getting like a good surface here against the bell with the bell kind of holding where the dent ball is. So I'm going to change this out for something else.
Now this has slightly less surface area, right? So I'm gonna have to change the amount of force that I've been putting through here to make sure that it blends with what I've been doing, right? Yeah, right in there is where I want to get. And this type of dent work, like I'm not really trying to like push out like a sharp dent, I'm just trying to change the shape. I'm trying to kind of like blend things together and like re-round this tube here. So I'm not applying a lot of pressure now, I'm just kind of going back and forth like over an area, trying to blend everything together. I can sort of see where my damp ball is, I've got a pretty good idea. I'm just trying to push everything out without it having like any parts of it that stick out above anything else. This is pretty hard, I'm not super in love with doing this on camera because I'm not the best at it, but hey, this is what I got to do today. Okay. Well, I like that better than I did. Now I'm going to see if I can go back over this guy here. Switch back out for the bigger one and blend a little more. Okay, and again, this is the kind of the blending stuff where I'm not really applying a lot of pressure. And I'm just trying to Get everything to be even. I don't know if you guys can see like the ever so slight change in the light where the dent ball goes. But I can see that and that's pretty handy. It's actually why I've got my lights set up the way I do, like longitudinally to my uh, dent station at least on instruments that are relatively shiny, that's pretty handy. To use as a way to figure out where your dent balls are. And also to sight dents. a lot better to me. I think I think we got that bell back where it should be. Alright, so I got the bell to a place where I'm pretty happy with it. And the next thing I want to do is actually take these keys off to get to this dent here. 
Uh, reason being that I actually want this post to move as part of this rib that it's on top of where it's got a dent. It's kind of crushed down. Um, but this is stuck. And I mean, I think it's a frozen rod, but also this thing being crushed in is actually applying pressure on this key. It's pushing that upwards, which is probably going to be bowing this. So I want to get this relieved of the pressure. So push this back down so I can try and get this undone. I've got to straighten this out later anyways. But here's how I'm going to try and do this. Now, I am actually pretty worried that this is going to come unsoldered on the bottom. It's already peeled back a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do is try and support it right here while I hit it from the top to try and move this downwards. If I support it from right here, then maybe it won't come, uh, maybe the solder won't pop off. I think there's a better than better than 50% chance that it's going to pop off anyways. But I've got this piece of wood here, which is actually like my cell phone stand that I made. <laughs> but I've got this piece of wood here, and I've got it pinned against the edge of this bench so it's not going to scoot away. And I'm going to take this and place it on there. So the wood is up against the, the bottom of that um, foot where it's starting to peel away and just maybe if I hit this it'll move but not peel off the bottom we'll see I, I don't think chances are good hopefully you guys can see yeah so you see how that foot I've got that resting on the wood Now that's free at least. Let's see, did it peel back? Not any farther than it was earlier. If I can keep this from breaking all the way, I might be able to actually help that gap later. Uh, although I think it's starting to peel here, is it? Maybe. Hmm. I'm going to leave that for now. Because I mean, there's this big dent I've got to push out, and that's going to, you know, apply some pressure. This, this thing under here is under a good bit of pressure right now. And when I pop this dent out and put it back, if we get really lucky, it might not pop out and everything will get straight and I won't have to resolder this. 95% chance um, one of these feet is going to pop off and I'm just going to take the whole thing off to get the dents out, straighten everything out, clean it off and try and resolder it as best as possible. Although with, with silver plate, it's at least for me, I find it really hard to make that invisible. So now this is moving. Maybe I'll be able to remove that. I did get it off. We can see we've got a dent right there. This post has been pushed in and kind of that way a little bit too. We can see we've got this post been pushed in a little bit. Not as easy to see. And then that's been pushed in a good bit, which is a little easier to see. And what I need to figure out is exactly how I'm going to push those out. But first, let's do something a little more of an immediate reward. So this is the octave, uh, I guess it's the equivalent of the octave rocker on these. Um, and it has been bent, it's been pushed down. Luckily, this didn't snap off. It seems pretty straight still. Uh, but it's been bent right at the hole where the rod goes through. So that's the weakest part of this particular piece of the key, and that's exactly where it bent. So what I want to do is hold it here and hold it here and just bend it back into place. And exactly how I hold it, using what and how much force I use, is going to have a pretty big determining factor on whether this looks okay in the end. I wish these jaws were just a tiny bit thinner, but that seems pretty good to me. And then from this angle, trying to get like as much, you know, as much jaw on that as I can with my parallel pliers and center it right around that bend so that when I squeeze, uh, I'm not going to mar the key and hopefully I just unbend what was bent versus create a like S bend. So let's give it a try. Ready? 
hopefully it doesn't snap. Not so great. Back of it looks okay, but the front of it is kind of twisted. So let's give that another try, except with a better angle. And I'm gonna have to move the camera so you guys can see this, I think. Anyways, let's see. So I'm gonna look at it from this direction. Let's see exactly what's going on here. Whoop. Still some bend in the back. Kind of a weird one. And now that I see it, there's actually a bit of a bow in this too, which couldn't have just happened because of the way we were holding it. So let's see. Maybe I will try holding part of it in here. Let's see which way would I want to do it. Famous last words, right? I said it would be quick and rewarding. This might look, this looks like it might be a little bit more of a difficult thing than I thought. So it's not great still. But now I can actually put part of it in here and use the pressure of the jaws to straighten out that little ripple, hopefully. Okay, that's a lot better. I like that much better than I did before. Again. Okay, looking better. Still like a little weird twist there, but it's kind of hard to see. At least. Look at it that way. How are we doing? Kind of want to see from your perspective. We want that to be straight. Right. That means they're in the same plane. Still feel like there's like a little bit of a twist here. Yeah, I mean if I clamp it there you can see that's kind of going up and there's also a little bit of a bend here. So let's unbend that. Make that a little straighter. And then that shows us the twist with that going up. That should be parallel to the top of this. Does that make sense? You see that? So I'm going to take... Hmm, how do I want to do this? I think probably like that. I just want to sort of rotate this down a little bit if I can. Mind the way you guys probably. These longer. But. Okay. Okay, now that's more parallel. Let's see what it looks like when I unhook it. That's quite a bit better, I feel like. Yeah, I like that a lot more. Okay. Now when I put that back together, what I'll have to do is check this gap here, right? I feel like there might be a tiny bit of a bend in here still, but when I put this back together, whether this fits well or not against, where's the piece it came off of? Oh, it's still attached to the body because the rod is frozen. But when I put this back together, and this goes here, 
See, there's a little bit of a gap there. What that's telling me is that that's not completely lined up yet. And it might be a bend, or it might be like a like this angle. It might be a little bit too far that way. But what I'll have to do is figure out why that is when I put it back together and straighten that out a little bit. I'm going to cross that bridge when I come to it because I want this to be off so I can fit it. And this rod in here is completely frozen right now. And I can't get it out. So that'll, that last bit of this we'll have to wait till later. But I'm happy with where we're at right now.